second segment, Gold and Black Live, live from Triple X here on State Street, on the hill but on the level. We didn't get any of our, because the presence, I didn't get any of our business taken care of. We want to thank our sponsors, obviously Triple X and then State Farm agent Trent Johnson, his office just down the hill. Uh, at, uh, uh, in fact, three of our sponsors, all four of our sponsors, you could do the proverbial <laughs> swing a cat and they'd all be here. John Basham at Basham Reynolds, and of course Hilton Garden Inn, they have the new new commercial out there as well. Christy Coons down at Wabash Landing when tomorrow is a big day, stay at HDI tonight. Tomorrow will be a big day for Purdue football tomorrow, at least for this Bordermaker football team. It's trying almost to the point of desperation to get things turned around. Purdue takes on Nevada at noon tomorrow. Stacy, uh, what do you see? Well, I will tell you that I picked Nevada, and I'll tell you why. It has nothing to do with Nevada. <laughs> uh, I just, I really felt good about Purdue coming off that first week, just really coming off the off season. You know, yeah. I felt like with these new coordinators that, you know, things were going to be better, and so I was really disappointed at the way they played against Cincinnati. So I'm kind of gun shy a little bit to pick them right now, but I think there are a lot of things that they can do well this week. Um, I think that the offense really has a chance to put some points up. Certainly the defense is going to have to stop the run. Um, but I don't think, I'm not too scared of Nevada's quarterback. So in theory, if you could actually stop the run. A big if. Yes. I thought you were going to gloss over that part. Yeah, you might, you might be okay on defense. It's a big if, though. It, it is, is a big if. I mean, Purdue hasn't stopped the run recently. Uh, they haven't stopped the run this season, right. and this is a very good Nevada running team with a very good running back and, and James Butler. So Purdue's going to have to do something differently. Safeties are going to have to play better. We saw Ross Ells mess around a little bit with rotating those guys in. I think if you felt comfortable about any of them, you'd see one of those guys step forward. Maybe we'll see that tomorrow. I don't know that we will, but Purdue needs better safety play, I think, and it's going to be able to stop the run against Nevada. You know, Nevada known for its pistol formation back in the day in 2005. That's changed a little bit, and yet they are going to throw some multiple looks at Purdue in theory with the option game in addition to uh, more, of a, more of a traditional passing game. But what is that in practice this week? What was the emphasis there in terms of trying to deal with that? Oh, yeah. You know, we heard all about eye discipline. Kyle and I were like, how many <laughs> yeah. times can we say eye discipline? Yeah. Um, it's two. Two, yeah. Eye discipline? <laughs> yeah. And Marcus Freeman talked about it this week, too, and when I sat down and watched the film with him, he said this is probably the most diverse offense they've played this year just because they do so much moving and shifting and different formations. And, and so they're doing that to try to confuse you, obviously, and that's big. Daryl Hazel said it's purposely to make the safeties misfit. Mm -hmm. And as he just said, the safeties have struggled this year. So that's certainly going to be the key. They don't do, they don't run a lot of plays, yeah. but they just run them from so many different looks that that can cause confusion. And Purdue has struggled at being in the right gaps and, and fitting right and, and just having the right assignments already in two games against teams not like this. Yeah. So it's going to be a challenge, I think, just from that perspective. We haven't even mentioned that Purdue has some personnel problems going yeah. into the game as well, and that's a big part of the storyline yeah. here, not having two offensive yeah. tackles. Your two starters aren't going to start at least. I would expect that neither Martise Patterson will, or Matt McCann will, will play at all. And you're going with a couple of guys, uh, the left tackle in particular and Jalen Neal, who hasn't played. Stacy could probably tell the exact number of snaps that he's played in the first two weeks. Four. On offense. It, it has not been significant. And that's a, it's a critical spot. Though, Nevada, if, 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 if you're going to have one opponent to do that against, maybe Nevada, just because they don't have a sack, and they tend to be, I would say, light a little bit in the front seven. They're but not gonna uh, blitz very much. But uh, that may change. That may change, yes. Yeah, in, in terms of big well, you're, you're, also down, you're also down to a point on the offensive line where you cannot get a guy banged up. True. Yeah, I mean, if you lose good. another offensive tackle, then perhaps Purdue goes with somebody short term, but I think if you lose somebody early in the game in tackle, you're going to see Jordan Roos move to right tackle do whatever other shifting they have to do and put Mike Mendez on the field because that's Mendez is pretty much their last remaining yeah. backup offensive lineman and he plays on the interior. So you have I mean you're down to the last of it. Yeah. Coming up I was gonna say coming off a of bye week last year and I know this has nothing to do with anything. Purdue obviously <laughs> had one of its best uh, uh, performances in beating Nebraska, though Nebraska kind of helped Purdue in that light, to say the least. But I think one of the interesting dynamics now, you know, we're talking talk with the President Daniels about that as well, is trying to get positive energy and to have something good happen so that you feel good about yourself as a football team 
is that what it really comes down to? And, we, and we'll talk to Brian about the talent level as well, but what, what do you see there? And, 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 and are you seeing the body language in, in, on the practice field that works? <laughs> Sorry, we were distracted. Yes. What was the question? All right. She doesn't believe in intensity. She doesn't believe intensity is a thing. Bring that so, up. All right. I think so from, an, okay. from an in excitement <laughs> perspective, which might have been where you're going that with that, like, what people want to watch, I thought that this offense was going to be that thing. You know, that they were going to be able to move the ball, score a lot of points, you know, have playmakers out there that you would at least go to maybe see the offense, you know. They do have two pretty good, at least at this point, outside receivers and D'Angelo Yancey and Dominique Young. Yeah. Markel Jones is a star. Um, and I think they have some other good pieces there. David Blau just needs to not turn the ball over. That's not all on him, but he, need, he needs to just protect it better. He talked about that this week. Maybe you'd have to take some more check downs and not try to push everything down the field, which is kind of was his mindset, like want to make the big play. I think if you do that, they've had 500 yards of offense the last two weeks. Yep. Do we know the last time that happened in back-to-back games? That would have been a number crunch. Yeah, we should have, done, should have done that. I missed it. We'll make it. We'll do it this week after they do it three weeks. There you go. So, so I mean, they're doing good things on offense. They just need to score more points. Under Hazel difficult first. That I. Is it difficult though to do with a stadium that's not doesn't have as many people in it as you like? I mean, I, I, well, I, that was really my question. Is the body language issue? Yeah. How does this team stay positive through the bad things? Yes. Yeah. That's a difficulty, I think, especially when you don't have your home fans to, to charge you up a little bit. You've got to try and generate it yourself. And when you've been through a string of however many years it's been now, and certainly the last four, uh, it's hard to generate, I think, your, your own energy. They have to be able to do it. Though. And bad things are going to happen. Right. Tomorrow, bad things will happen. Oh, yeah. You just have to limit those things and move on more quickly. And we saw it. I think Stacy wrote about it well. That we saw David Blau do that in, in the first game. You know, bad things happen in that game, and he wiped it away. Yeah. Like you might occasionally see him do it. He just has to be able to do that in every game. And, and you know, and then maybe limit, limit the mistakes as well. And I think, just real quickly, D'Angelo Yancey is a captain on this team. I talked to him this week and asked him about that. You know, are you in the, oh, here we go again, you know, mentality that we've seen this team have? And he said, no. And I said, wow, well, that's good. And he's like, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's, it's a big deal if they're not to that point. And that, I think that has a lot to do with the leaders on this team. Daryl Hazel has talked a lot about the leadership. I think we see it a little bit, too, and they talk about having one voice, one message. And I think when you have that and you have, really have strong leadership, those guys are going to try to you know, keep pulling each other up. Now, you still got to win at yeah. some point. So. I mean, leadership is great, but sometimes you got to have yeah. more guys out there making plays, too, yeah. and that, oh, that's where they lack. No question on that standpoint. Obviously, last tune-up, and, and, and right now there's no such thing as a tune-up for Purdue, but <laughs> you have the Big Ten schedule. It's hard to put a. <laughs> it's hard to look ahead. It's, it's very hard to look, and maybe that's the lesson there is that they, they just you don't if you're Purdue you just don't look ahead. You look to the next time you're walking on the field, so to speak, next possession. I don't it's, think Purdue is looking ahead. Yeah, and and, and, and I don't think they can because you know, obviously you start Big Ten play next week in Maryland, and then go to Illinois from the, from the, on the back side of that as well. All right, in terms of uh, defensive line play, uh, we've talked about Austin Larkin getting back in the rotation, don't know that he'll start. Getting a pass rush, and this tomorrow may not with Tyler Stewart, a guy that, uh, you know, they, they, and they haven't been sacked too many times, I think only three times so mm -hmm. far this year. That's not necessarily the, the right evaluation of, of pass pressure in terms of number of sacks, but it still is clear what he needs to improve in that area. Well, I think they need to improve in, in a lot of areas up front. I mean, I, I think just from a run game yeah. also. Sure. I mean, we saw some plays when Stacy and I were looking back where, you know, they didn't get those ends out to set the edge, to get that running back back into traffic on the inside. And I think, you know, if you're looking just from a defensive line play, I think that is as, as, yeah. as much important for Purdue right now as getting after the quarter. They've got to be more active. They've got to be able to follow their assignments. Talk to Eddie Wilson Tuesday about, you know, executing assignments. How do you stop the run? He's like, you know, some of that's on me. I was not 100% or it, from talking to him, it didn't sound like he was close to 100%. They, they have to be able to do that. And if you don't, then, you know, they're just going to rush the ball all over, and some of that pass rush stuff's just not going to back. Well, and especially with the option they're going to do. I mean, they really need to be disciplined. Um, we saw in practice this week, Randy Melvin was really hammering his guys on a couple technique things about what they need to do and where they need to stay um, in certain scenarios. So I, I think with the pass rush piece, it would help maybe if you didn't play your starters like 80% of the snaps, which is what they did against Cincinnati. Um, 
And I understand that a little bit because there isn't much depth there. Yeah. And especially, so that's why Larkin will help, even if he can come in and play 20 snaps, which I think is probably the ceiling on what they think they're going to get from him. Um, but if you can play some more guys inside, maybe, and let Replogle and Wilson have a break, that could help too. Um, the problem is when you put the backups in, the backups aren't as good as the start. So it's, it's that balance of how long do we keep these guys in, you know, when they're not giving you the kind of production that those other guys will. Anything else to add? Last, Last question just about technique and tackling, and, and I know you've counted these things and, and where this, <laughs> and where, you know, the effort and all that is all important. Sure, you got to make tackles, you got to make plays. Is that a simple way to define this defense at this point? Or are they, are they, or are they not getting in position, or are they, or is the scheme problematic? Or is it all the above? I think Marcus Freeman said something really interesting this week. He said, it's simple, but it's not easy. And I think, you know, when you see the guys are in the hole, if they're in the right place, you want them to make the tackle. But, you know, there's a lot of elements that go into that. Um, for me, it's more concerning if they're not in the right place at all. But if you're in the right place and you're just missing a play, like, I feel like you're closer then, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, let's just teach Leroy Clark, for example, how to, like, properly tackle someone. And if you do that, Shoot, you saved like three plays from the Cincinnati game, you know? I think the deal with the scheme for me is that, you know, I understand you want to have a nickel against, you know, a third receiver. It's a slot guy. Which you should. But in doing so, you are putting an awful lot of guys on the field who have not played a whole lot. I mean, you look, Miles Norwood has not played a whole lot. Tim Kaysom has not played a whole lot. Uh, Yvonne Mosley has barely played at all. And Leroy Clark is the, the senior that we've been talking about. is not playing very well. So you add those guys up, and then I don't think Brandon Roberts is particularly playing great either, which is a little bit surprising because yeah. I think we feel like we're high on him, yeah. a really good camp. So, you know, you you look at the scheme, you're like, okay, I understand this. Well, those guys, those five guys you're playing out there, aren't playing very well. They're in position a lot of times, like Stacy's saying, but the next step is to be able to actually make the plays. And you know, how much good does it do you if you are in position if you're not able to knock the ball away at the last second? And they just haven't been able to do that. All right, well, make what sure pass, what are they, yeah. what are they, what pass breakups, what do they have? One? I think two. Two, 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 two or maybe. three, and two of them are by linebackers. Kaysan uh, had one last week. Okay, so I think for yeah. DBs, I think Kaysan is probably the only one has one. I mean, that's I just, think. you know, not a total measure, I don't think, of your DBs, but I think it's a, a decent indicator of how often they've been able to, you know, make the play at the end. And it, and it is. If Bob comes back, it would help a little bit. Yeah, but he's not 100%. Yeah, and, uh, and it, we'll see, but we will see him a few plays tomorrow, it sounds like. Should, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts. Yes, that's All right, we're going to uh, take a break, bring in Brian Newbert, who will, who will grace us with an un infinite wisdom, I'm certain, <laughs> in the final segment. Also, we'll bring in uh, so Greg Ayersman to right tell him thank you for uh, providing us a triple X today for the for the big show. So we'll take a two minute break. Bring in Brian Newbert. Let Stacy and Kyle think even more about this football game tomorrow. They're they're, they're enjoying their root beers as you exactly. see. And we'll be back in two minutes on Golden Black Live.